Yo brother, it's time for us to start talking the real man. We've been sugarcoating too much, we've got to start calling everything out for what it is. Hey guys, I'm here with my favorite all-time wheel, the Master Pro. I love this wheel because I can just ride forever in the mountains at a relatively fast uh, pace without having to charge. Uh, love this wheel. It does have a couple uh, annoyances that uh, that I think I've I've uh, have a, a solution for, and uh, some of you will be interested in this. And also, besides the annoyances with this wheel, I have a fix for all you big old wheel owners that can't charge your wheel to uh, three point or 134.4 volts, so stay tuned for that. First, the annoyances are with this wheel. Uh, tilt back voltage is 96 volts. That's 3.0 volts per cell, which is fantastic. But the wheel will start the low battery beeps at 105 volts, <laughs> which is crazy. That's almost like 25% battery left in your wheel and you're starting to hear the beep beep <laughs> for you know you, you could ride 20 miles like that uh okay so that's one thing now kind of unrelated to this was um an experience that dawn had she had uh the commander pro from e-wheels she was testing it and uh they're very early versions of the Commander Pro. Uh, Extreme Bow or Bagode didn't update the firmware uh, for the correct low voltage. So they still had it set for a 100 volt wheel. <laughs> so Don rolled their wheel down to like 86 volts <laughs> before realizing, hmm, maybe I better stop riding. Uh, I forget what, I don't know what that comes out, volt, volts per cell, but it, it was probably 2.7 volts, really low. And, uh, but she was riding fast at that pace. So just by accident, we've, we have learned how much margin we have at low battery. I mean, for the longest time, when I heard the low battery beep, I would start being pretty conservative because I didn't want uh, just to lose lose power and cut out, right? But the fact that she could run down to 86 volts fast without it cutting out meant that you have, we have a lot of headroom uh, on, on these wheels. So I reached out to Bill, AKA Freestyler, and he's, uh, he can be found um, many places, I'm sure, but on the electric unicycle forum, you can find him there. And he has been doing creating customized firmware for big old wheels. I don't know if he's been doing it for any other wheels. So, Bill, thanks again. Uh, I love what you did uh, specifically for me and for the stuff you're doing for other riders in the community. Uh, Bill is amazing to be able to reverse engineer the big old firmware and to be able to uh, customize it now. So I reached out to him. I said. Uh, Two things, could, could you create custom firmware for my Master Pro that do, does two things. One, get rid of that low battery beep at 105 volts. So we agreed, let's, uh, let's put it at 96 volts. <laughs> Great, now you're thinking 96 volts, that's tilt back voltage, that's not much of a low battery warning. <clears throat> well, the second part of this was I asked, based on the experience we, we know, the, the margin we have, Let's change the tilt back voltage on this wheel to 92 volts, which is 2.9 volts per cell, I believe. So he created it. And um, any of you who own the Master Pro and are interested in that, <clears throat> and if you have an Android phone with uh, EUC World, my favorite app, you too can get this firmware. And what you're gonna wanna look for is a firmware, it's called Master Pro PWM Tilt Back and in parentheses, low voltage. And that's the one he created for me. And so publicly available if you got the software. <laughs> so super easy, you can load the firmware, it loads like in, uh, I think in 
took like 15 seconds to load the firmware and it was done. And, um, and then I took this wheel for a ride. <laughs> now, you're probably going to see that video after this video, but uh, it was eventful. Uh, I took, it was a really long ride in the mountains, and um, I w didn't intend to actually run it down at 92 volts, but I actually had to. I barely got home. I was, on, I was within a half a volt of getting home, and, uh, <coughs> but I made it. And um, at, uh, n unfortunately, at 92 volts, somewhere right around there, so Gatway, the BMS on the battery packs triggered, at least one of them. So the BMS alarm triggered. So I started hearing continuous buzzing, bzzz, kind of a low level. I couldn't hear when I was riding. So we don't know exactly what voltage it triggers, but it, I'm thinking it must be pretty close to 2.9 volts, maybe a little bit less uh, per cell. So uh, unfortunately, when that happens, that triggers a relay in the, in the um, power distribution board in the wheel, which disables charging of the wheel. And in my case, to, to fix that buzzing, I just needed to uh, charge the battery pack, but um, with that alarm triggered, you can't charge the wheel. So the only solution, I went down to Roger. Thanks again, Roger, you were a lifesaver. We opened up the wheel, used his uh, adapter cable, so I could charge each battery pack separately and used his uh, Roger charger to, we set it to, I don't know, low 50s, I forget what, but just enough to get it above uh, where it would untrigger that alarm. And it uh, took me uh, 15 minutes to, to uh, get the voltage up in the battery packs, the alarm went away, and, uh, and all was good. And charged up the wheel, runs beautifully. So, Here's the, here's the fix for me for this particular wheel running at 92 volts. And again, I don't plan on getting on doing this very often, but it's great to have that capability. Roger has created a modified power distribution board for uh, the big old 134 volt wheels. This one came out of a, a Master Pro, I believe. And uh, if you want one of these, by the way, see the uh, link in the description join Roger's telegram group and you can find out all you need to know because I believe he's going to be selling these with this modified board you will be able to charge your big old 134 volt wheel to 134.4 volts and, uh, and there are a couple other advantages maybe a couple disadvantages so uh, let me uh, grab a piece of paper and uh, draw a little schematic out so I can highlight uh, what you're going to get if you get one of these boards. And then I'm going to install it in the wheel. Okay, this is going to be a very crude and simplified schematic. Just keep that in mind. This is <clears throat> your power distribution board. And let's see, we have, um, well, These are for battery inputs. This is your charger input. <clears throat> this is a solid state relay, and there's actually multiple, multiple copies of these inside the power distribution board, but I'm just representing it by one. And these blocks represent some additional logic and analog circuitry that measures uh, BMS error signals from the battery packs, your uh, voltage level coming in from the charger, 
your current flowing through this circuitry and uh, and these components are what's drawing drawing some of the power that's coming in from your charges so if your charger is 134.4 volts you're only getting about 132 volts into your batteries because of what's going on in here now the old uh, power distribution boards like on my uh, version 1 master and master pro uh, this full voltage gets into the batteries but they made some change that's um, you're losing a couple volts now in here but these batteries are coming in here and each battery pack has a BMS signal wire and if there's a high voltage on that wire <clears throat> high voltage meaning anything greater than zero essentially that indicates that that battery pack is, has an error and if that occurs this relay gets triggered so it's no it's now in the open position and now any charging that you attempt to do just doesn't go anywhere and uh, so you can't charge a wheel that's a safety mechanism that um, the gold implemented so if the battery packs have a, some kind of a fault you can't charge them but you can have a fault like in case of what I happen had had where the battery was just a bit too low but there wasn't a problem with the battery pack you're, st you're stuck you can't you can't charge the wheel uh, again very simplified now what Roger did is I'm going to simplify this even more <clears throat> here's a here's a, a distribution board and I'm going to represent this is your batteries this is your plus minus and then here is plus and then uh, minus to your uh, charger and what Roger has done essentially is to cut this connection and bypass the distribution board so now if this uh, really gets triggered by a BMS error nothing nothing happens your your charger is um, still able to charge the batteries and since this bypass with this bypass in place you no longer have this phantom say two volt uh, loss that's occurring in the distribution board so whatever you're putting here is getting into the battery now the battery still has its BMS the battery is still managing the charging of its battery pack uh, but you have lost some safety mechanisms your uh, one is your <clears throat> charge ports they're now hot just like the old days with the old Gatway wheels uh, so wrong way is going to hate these <laughs> sorry about that Adam um, BMS errors now they will still occur if you have a bad battery pack you're still going to get that uh, buzzing sound uh, but you would still be able to charge the wheel even with that uh, error so uh, and you shouldn't charge the battery pack if you have an error unless you know what's causing the error in my case I do know what's causing the error and uh, third the you now have a 15 amp charging limit uh, with the distribution board logic in place you're limited to a I think it's around 10 amps with at least for the master it's 10 amps I don't think it's much more in the master pro uh, but with that out of the out of the um, out of the circuit now 
you're limited only by this uh, 15 amp fuse that's on the con on the power distribution board. Stay under 15 amps and you're fine. Um, I would I wouldn't go above 14 amps, but if you do go above 15 amps, then that fuse is going to blow on the control board. You won't be able to charge your uh, wheel, and you're going to have to solder on a new uh, 15 amp fuse. Okay, installing this board is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to disconnect the batteries. I want to disconnect the control board. Turn the wheel. Okay, now we're safe. Okay, now there are three screws that get disconnected. Three millimeter Allen wrench. That's it, and this is the new one. Now, what Roger has done is he's also rotated, you know, this uh, little index pin. He's rotated 180 degrees, so you'll be able to uh, look in the wheel to see if it's a modified power distribution board. Gets me when it, <laughs> that little spark when you energize the control board. Okay, and that's it. Pretty simple. Well, there you have it. I know this. Solution isn't for uh, a lot of you, probably most of you, but if you're a savvy, um, experienced EUC owner, you have Begold wheels that you'd like to have a full charge, uh, then you might be interested in the modified uh, power distribution board uh, from Roger. Again, see the link below. Reach out to him. I'm sure he can give you more details. And if I uh, made a mistake in my diagramming, I'm sure he can correct me. Uh, add a comment, add a comment, Roger, in the video if I screwed up somehow. <laughs> um, but if you like to ride your wheels to the limit, particularly if you have a Master Pro, boy, get that film firmware uh, from Bill and say give Bill big thanks and uh, get that power distribution board. Look, if I have a BMS error, I'm gonna I'm gonna know it. The, it, the only way I expect to get a BMS error from one of my batteries is if I'm on a long ride and I need to drive it down close to 92 volts and then I get that error, I know I know the reason. And then, then I'm going to be able to plug in my charger and be back in a, back up and running before you know it. I won't have to open up the wheel or do do anything. But if I just get a BMS error, out of the blue that I don't know why it's happening. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna disconnect the battery and I'm gonna play it safe. I'm obviously not gonna char charge it. All right guys, well, hope this video was interesting, perhaps useful to some of you. 
And until next time, safe riding.